You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Shalom. How are you? How are you doing? Good. That's what I was <laughs> expecting to hear. Also, very happy to hear that some of you are really enjoying video blocks, B L O C K S, not video box.com. Don't go to <laughs> very clear. Don't go to video box.com. But if you do go to video blocks.com forward slash drone creator, you will save $100 off of an annual subscription to both audioblocks and videoblocks.com, which will give you exclusive access to hundreds of thousands of copyright free clips. That's video, audio, and motion graphics. Check it out videoblocks.com forward slash drone creators. All right, Raba, well, happy day. Welcome to another day to you. Thank you very much. Welcome to another show yeah. of Ask Drone You. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. We really do appreciate it. This is episode number 615. I have another really good question today, and I think this will help a lot of people because it's really important for those of you that are out there trying to get your website started, um, more people to see it. These things are important to having that process go well. I think the question here is why is metadata so important? And a lot of people do not understand that not only does Google scrape and crawl your website for data, but they also scrape and crawl your images for data. And if your images are backlinked to your site and they provide information that is not only going to protect you in the long run, hold others accountable, but also give you a great boost in SEO or search engine optimization, which is all about organic search. Um, now, how can it protect you? Very simple. If someone steals your image, if you've embedded the right metadata, you can prove it's your image. So before we get any further, Rob, why don't, why don't you just go ahead and play that funky question? I appreciate the videos and information I get from the drone you. I have a question about embedding metadata in video and also images. I know Paul's talked about that before. It's a pro tip. And when I go to do that, I find a few places that make sense, but there's such an extensive list of metadata, especially for um, video and stills, that uh, I'm not sure how much to put in there and what are the different categories to use. So I wondered if you could explain that in detail. Thanks. And by the way, I bought my membership anticipating to use maybe a month or two at the most, take advantage of the downloads, but several months later, I'm still a member. So thanks. Howdy doody. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you for being a member. We really appreciate that. Love having you in the community. And thank you for the question. Um, I think maybe, Paul, we should start off for some of the folks out there talking about what is metadata? Just real quick. Mm, metadata is essentially information that is embedded on the back end of the photo that provides details to where the photo was taken, who took the photo, who has copyright to the photo, where did the photo come from, what is the photo about? Or video. Or video about. Right. Yes. And having this information compiled the way that you want it does increase your organic search results. It does help Google find out who you are, and it does help backlink your site when other people share your photo. Yes, even sharing it on Facebook um, can have uh, an effect on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, what metadata is important what, what part should you go over? Well, let's hop right into my handy dandy screen recording that you should see if you're watching on YouTube. So this is one episode you're going to want to go check out on YouTube on if YouTube. this stuff is important to you. For sure. Okay. So first things first, I'm here in Photoshop. And before I go any further, one question that Rob asked me, um, we do have a photo editing class on the site. It's VIX class. I have watched it myself five or six times. Mm -hmm. I learn something new every single time I watch it. Um, and I've used the tips 
um, from his editing class because he really is a master of editing uh, in my photos. And finally, I got the voice of approval from Vic hey. <laughs> last week. 13,672 <laughs> images later? Actually, 176,000. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. And I only know that because I just backed up my computer. <laughs> anyway, um, so I- I'm proud of this image, but if you're looking at it, you'll see a brand new Centurion RI-237 on the right and a brand new Super Air Nod on, or mm. excuse me, on the right, and then the Centurions on the left. It's about three hundred thousand um, dollars worth of boats, right there. Probably. Yeah, probably a little bit more than that. Um, but anyway, what I did is I went in Lightroom, I edited this image. It's why I'm talking about editing. Um, when I take photos, I take photos a certain way. Um, then I stack the photos together and I create an HDR, and then I go into Photoshop and I begin to edit uh, more so in Photoshop. But here I am in Photoshop. This is, uh, you know, in Lightroom, you can set presets to upload metadata to your photos if you are doing auto stacking like me. Um, you can do that. It does really help. Um, it really helps save time. So if you're doing a lot of images, I would set your presets in Lightroom. Which we have a class on that as well, don't we? We Is do. It, I don't know if it's released yet. If oh, not, no, it's on the site. Okay, I watched it. so that's it. on the site so as well. Lightroom, it's called Lightroom Automation, and it's all about scaling um, your photo editing. So it's all about, you know, you know how to edit photos on your own. Here's what happens if you're doing AEB with your drone and you've got 400 photos and you need to stack them and then edit them and output them and all that. So it's it's automation. Right. Um, and it's the system I use now to this day. In fact, uh, I remember my first Marriott job took me nine hours to edit all the photos. Mm. And I was like, this is not scalable. It's not sustainable. No. It's not scalable. No. Um, and I realized, I'm like, there's got to be a better way to do this. So I talked to Jason, my tech friend who owns Nerds Limited. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, there's a much easier way to do it. And then I talked to Vic, and he was like, oh, yeah, but I do it in Capture One. Mm-hmm. And I've been realizing that Capture One actually reads these Sony sensor images so much better than Photoshop and Lightroom. And I didn't think that was possible. Mm. Um, but once I saw it, it makes sense. Right. It totally makes sense why Vic's photos always look a little bit better than even the best guys out there too. It's beautiful stuff. And it also goes to show like why other, like the DJI guys that no longer work for DJI and now they're trying to start a school. It also makes sense why their photos never look nearly as good as his. Yeah. And by the way, you can check his photos out at his Instagram feed, right? Which is Moss uh, Photography. Moss Photography. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys should check that out. It's good stuff. And we share, uh, we share images from him all the time too. Although True. Jake shared an image yesterday I had to take down. Really? So, yes. <laughs> there were a couple. So <laughs> huh. Did you tell him why? No, I hadn't even told him yet. I just oh. did it. Well, I, was, to... I was too deep in migraine to text we him need about to tell it. Him why that is. It, I wouldn't have been a friendly text message to your poor little son. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so I refrain. Um, but anyway, all right, here we are. We're going into Photoshop. This is if I'm doing metadata for one photo. Again, use Lightroom if you're doing um, mass upload of metadata. So I'm going to go to File Info. It's going to pull up this image. Now, here you can see on the left, there's Basic, Camera Data, Origin, IPTC, IPTC Extension, GPS Data, Audio Data, Video Data, Photoshop, DICOM, and Raw Data. Now, um, there's a lot of data in this photo. One thing that I see people doing often and I totally understand it, is deleting the GPS data off of the images because the way that the GPS data is captured is not always accurate. So for example, it may tell you the altitude, but it's not going to tell you if the altitude is MSL or if it's AGL. Mm -hmm. So if you have some FAA inspector who is not familiar with the fact that DJI is writing their photos as MSL instead of AGL, you could get in trouble. So it, it's good to know this little piece of nuanced information. Hmm. For example, as I'm looking at this photo right now, it shows our position in space, but it says my altitude was 556 meters up. That's crazy. Yeah, especially when the photo <laughs> is only 15 feet off the ground. Oh, how interesting. So see how that could be a potential problem. Why were you, sir, what, it says you're flying at 556 meters up. That is completely illegal. Why were you doing that? Well, sir, that's MSL. Look at the photo. I'm 15 feet above the right. ground. You yeah. know what I mean? So anyway, GPS data, I understand why people delete that. I totally get it. Um, but understand that if you're a local business and you're taking photos of the local area, you want to leave the GPS data in there because it is going to help you with SEO. So going back... 
The basic stuff is really simple. Uh, you can input all your data right there, but you're still going to need to go to the IPTC data to add some more stuff. So I just skip basic camera data and all that, and I go right into IPTC. Who's the creator? My name. What's my job title? Again, if it's a local thing, add your address in here. I never do because our business is international. We're in 101 countries now. So uh, I'm not really worried about putting United States or anything, and that's another reason I delete my GP data. So website, this is how you backlink the photo to your site. So if anyone shares it, um, your SEO data goes up because it's backlinked. You can add your email in here if you want to provide an easy way for people to reach out to you if they want to use your photo. Um, normally only savvy uh, content creators will know about that. Mm -hmm. But this is again the way that you protect yourself if someone illegally shares your photo. It's happened to me over two dozen times. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, someone stole my photo, they shared it on Facebook, took my watermark off, blah, 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 blah. All you have to do is go to the photo, top right corner, those three dots or three lines, whatever it is, click that, report this photo. I don't think it should be on Facebook. It's my intellectual property. Just provide the back end screenshot of the photo and the metadata together so they can see that it is the photo and the metadata from that photo. Um, or provide a link to your website. This is another good reason it's always good to upload a photo to your website mm -hmm. or to your personal Facebook page before you give it to anyone because then again, it showcases the standard because I've even had things with the USPTO, which I grew up next to the USPTO, so it's funny here I am talking about PTO. Um, and I, I've actually had to go to them and say, like, I've got a significant issue. You know, I've ceased and desist this person. I've talked right. to my lawyer. It's not happening. Um they told me, do this, 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 and this, and it went away. For you guys out there, most people illegally share your content on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. It's so simple. Those three dots, report the content, post the link where you originally posted the content, or showcase them the metadata to prove it's yours, and that content will come down. The third time that this happens to um, a Facebook page, like the third time that they're taking content that's not theirs, Facebook will remove the page. Yeah, because Facebook doesn't want those problems. No. I mean, they don't, I mean they're going to do everything. They're protecting themselves mm -hmm. as much as they're protecting your information. Yeah. So they have a very vested interest in doing that. Yeah. So um, this is how, I hate to say it, but this is how a lot of pages that have good content have been taken down. So, and I'm happy that they've been taken down because I believe that the content creator should be given credit for what they what they produce because it's unique. So, anyway, going back to the metadata, if we go to IPTC IPTC content, the headline of your shot should include keywords about what's in the photo. For example, where is the location? What are you doing? And what is it with? So my headline is Lake Pleasant Wake Surfing with Centurion and Nautique Boats because there's a Centurion and there's a Nautique boat in there. So but that was very thought out. I mean, that wasn't just random. You picked those words very specifically. Mm -hmm, because what's in the photo? What are we doing? Where is it? Right. This is what Google is looking for. What's the photo about? Who's in the photo? Where is the photo? So I know where to show people. And when they're looking for things, I know what to show people. So then we look at our description. Now, our description, again, has to be keyword-centric, Rob. Keyword-centric, and you've done research to make sure that you're putting the right keywords in there. Yes. So, and I bring that up because Mike asked specifically, what kind of information do I need to put in there? Well, it's the information that you've discovered as the information needed, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. There's some really good tools out on the internet, some paid, some not paid, that will help you out. I would recommend this. Again, you need to focus on who is your client, what is the audience. Then the next question, how are those people looking for people like me? What, why are they going to be looking for people like me? Mm -hmm. how, and, and that's the thing too, you, you, you've got to think about is that there are two very different ways that people find content. One, they're showed the content Two, they're looking for the content. Okay. So you need to think with SEO, how are these people finding me? What are they looking for? If you have difficulty with this check out answer the public.com and type in, uh, Albuquerque film crew, Rob, if you want to try that. And then it's going to give you how people search for that thing. What questions are they asking? And that can help provide you with more metadata on how people are looking for you. Because if I'm a drone pilot, let's go back to our Houston thing. Um, let's talk about that guy, Michael Wyatt, who gave us the invite to Corpus, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in fishing advertising. How are people looking for that? Um, how to push my fishing business, how to sell fish better. Um, 
best advertising for marine activities, best advertising for boating activities, best tourism act. You know, like what? How are they finding that guy? Right? Mm -hmm. Are you a drone pilot or an advertising firm? Right. So if I were an advertising firm um, and I'm trying to showcase this photo, my description would be something like setting up a new advertising commercial for Centurion and Nautique boats as they float in the sunset at Lake Pleasant. Right. OK. But that's not really what I'm here for. Centurion is one of my clients. So I always keyword my stuff to help them out um, just because they always hire me. Yeah. And I'm saying thank you. It's the whole scratch back thing. Whether they know I'm scratching their back or not. They probably don't, but uh, <laughs> Paul, they do in other ways. But Paul Singer, if you're listening to this, I scratch your back every day. <laughs> anyway, um, so all right, it's weird. There's Pauls in the most important places of my life: Paul Singer, Centurion, Paul Taylor, Paul Shank, my homeowner. Like, I mean, it's just Paul, 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 Paul. Paul. That is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, and then there's Peter here in the office. So Peter and Paul all, always. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the description again, keyword centric. So. Um, you know, maybe we could say instead of compare the look between Nautique and Centurion boats as they float in the sunset at Lake Pleasant, I could say something like uh, Arizona drone pilot showcases a comparison, a comparison between the look of the Nautique and Centurion boats as they float. So again, I'm using keywords because if I'm a drone pilot in Arizona, people may be searching Arizona drone pilot. And if I'm putting that keyword on every one of my photos and I'm constantly releasing content, that's how you overtake the competition in SEO. It's literally that simple. So um, then my keywords, Centurion Boats, Drone Photo, Aerial Photo, Aerial Pilot, Drone Pilot, Arizona, Arizona Drone Pilot, Boating Drone Pilot, Action Sports Drone Pilot. You can put Centurion, Nautique in there. Copyright Notice. This is another thing that I think is really important. Copyright Notice, Paul Aiken, Drone You rights usage term, all rights reserved. Now, another little secret, if you're using a Mac and I do copyright notice, if I hit option G, the copyright symbol comes up. Look at that. Hmm. Option G, Paul Aiken, which nice. means copyright Paul Aiken. So that is your protector. If anyone copies this photo, all you have to do is pull this up, send them a cease and desist, and a f I almost cussed very badly. And an invoice. Sorry, I hate it when people steal That's my so content. That's so weird because that hardly ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> As Ilka looks up to smile. <laughs> anyway, so then what I'll do is just save my photo. Um, let's save it in documents. All right. Just as a JPEG and click OK. All right. It's saving. Now if I go to Finder, all my files for today. Finder's a little slow. Finder's a little slow. We're going to close Finder. <laughs> Finder's a little dead. Okay. Lake Pleasant. Okay, here it is. Oh, different photo, but I'm pretty sure this has meta information on it anyway. So if we open it in preview, we can say show inspector, IPTC, and look, it's all there. Nice. Voila. So, guys, that's how you do it. I mean, that is the step-by-step... -step in a nutshell, boom. I Crash course. And by the way, just to clarify again, that is for an image or a video. They're both going to be essentially yes. the same, correct? Um, Photoshop clearly only works with images, whereas um, you know Final Cut Pro, Premiere right. Pro. But at the very end of the video, before you export it, if you're using Final Cut Pro, it says, what is the title of this video? What is the description? What are the tags? Secret to YouTube, enter your information there first. Yeah. Seriously. So anyway. Quick tip. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And if you found this information, share it with someone because it'll make you look pretty cool, won't it? That's what I thought. Thanks again for watching. You're listening to Ask Drone You.